Hi everyone, welcome to Tribulation Ready Survival. Today I'm going to share a dream with you that I had back in March. I've waited to share it until the Holy Spirit gave me permission to share. So in the last few days I've been feeling like it's time to share and today I just felt like it was the day to share. So I need to preface this by explaining to you for those of you who don't know, Mike had a stroke back in 2019. The stroke affected his eyesight and ended his 20 year police career. Um, to talk to him, you've seen him on videos, you wouldn't know he had a stroke, except for he's now partially blind. And um, so obviously we don't want police officers running around that can't even see everything. So um, he, took, he had to take a medical retirement there and he already um, had a little compensation coming in from the VA. So that's important to the dream. So in the dream, Mike and I lived in a corner house, which we don't, but in my dream, we lived in a corner house. And um, Mike had borrowed a police SUV and a trailer. And he wanted to back it out of our driveway and he put it in neutral and no one steering the steering wheel started slowly backing it out onto the, the cross street, not this street. This street would have been the street where our house was, the cross street. So he went kind of like this. And I'm sitting there not understanding what he's doing. And he starts pushing it down the cross street. And as he's pushing it, he loses control but the vehicle starts going faster and faster and faster. And it's not just going faster on a, on a flat road, it's going uphill a little bit. And um, it starts going so fast, he's running as fast as he can and he can't catch it. And as the, um, make sure I'm not missing anything. And as the, the police SUV and the trailer continue going, it crashes into a house and goes all the way through the house at maximum speed. But it doesn't even slow down after it hits that crash. It goes through the next house and it keeps going. We don't, we can't see it anymore. And so what I understood from this was um, with it being just around the corner that this started is this is coming soon and our soon and God soon I don't know, because God's soon is never my soon. So, um, this is just around the corner was my understanding. And my other understanding was there's going to be several crashes in quick succession. I'm thinking probably financial crash and probably, um, you know, we, we already see the food shortages and all of that. I think that First world countries like the United States are going to become third world countries in just a day. And um, the reason I believe that is I believe we're under judgment. So many people will say, well, the United States can't be in judgment because we're a godly nation. We are a wicked nation. Um, Revelation 18 I believe is is about the United States. I believe the United States is Babylon. It took me a long time to get there, but I truly believe the United States is Babylon. In verse 7 of chapter 18, it says, In the measure that she glorified herself and lived luxuriously, in the same measure give to her torment and sorrow, for she says in her heart, I sit as a queen and am no widow and will see no sorrow. That sounds very much like the United States and the people I know in the United States, like we're not going to have to, to suffer anything. But um, what God has been showing me is we are, we're, we're ripe for judgment. We're going to start suffering in greater measurement. And um, it's time to repent and get right with God. Because like I said in the last video where I was giving the testimony about our puppy, you can have all the preps in the world. They will not save you. Um, just this week, you know, we have this new puppy. She is sleeping through the night, but she's getting up really early. 
but I'm not sleeping through the night. I'm getting up and down in the night. So, you know, Mike and I are getting up together with this puppy because we're both so tired and taking her out, playing with her, feeding her breakfast. And so the other day I was really tired and she was resting and I thought, you know what, I'm going to go take a little bit of a nap. Both girls were at work and, and so I laid down and when I laid down, I had a vision of a couple of helicopters and I, sh I, that's all I, I just saw the helicopters flying over in the, in the sky and, and I was, so I went and looked up military helicopters cause I knew they were military. And um, the one that I could find, I showed it to Mike and Mike said, oh, that is a Russian helicopter. And um, I can't remember what model he said, but he knew what it, he knew what it was. And so I, I believe we're going to be invaded. I believe we're about to see so much that we have not yet seen. We need to prepare our spiritual houses. We need to... In the dream, Mike the, had a police SUV with a trailer. Well, our money, the money that we use to, for our family comes from his retirement and the military from when, he was, from when he was worked in the military as well. So when this crash happens, money's gonna be gone. It's not gonna do you any good. If you've got several thousand sitting in savings, it's just gonna be sucked up and gone. If the best thing you can do for your family is, is put that into food, put that into supplies, put that in the things that you're going to need anyway. Um, maybe, you're, maybe you have a little bit of extra money, well buy a couple extra pairs of tennis shoes even. If you haven't paid attention, the prices are going up so high, we're not gonna be able to afford anything. Um, so, I just want to share this with you today and tell you to be prepared. Um, since this video is so short, I'm going to go ahead and share the second dream that I had and this dream I'd had just a couple of days ago on the night of the 8th and 9th. Um, in the dream, I was driving and I realized I had got on the interstate and I realized I was going the wrong way. So... I followed a truck onto an off-ramp. When we get to the off-ramp, well, as we're go going down the off-ramp, another truck is coming straight at us. We're able to avoid it, and um, we get down to the bottom of the off-ramp, and it's a, a check-in station. There's no road, it's just a check-in station. So suddenly we're out of the car, we're in a line and we're the only ones there's there's one where the truck driver's at and there's another line where Mike and I our girls and our dog are and I hear the truck driver refuse to be tested or take the thingy you know what I mean and he had his son with him his small son they took his son from him because he wouldn't do it so I know that we're getting ready to be asked to be tested and to take the thingy. And when we refuse, our dog is taken from us and the four of us are separated. So I wanted, the things I got out of this dream was, don't follow anyone else, only follow the Holy Spirit, only do what God says. No one person's going to save you. Um, for example, there is a teacher that I, really respect and I get a lot out of his teachings and he's continually teaching um get away from the cities get out of the cities you gotta you gotta go you know into the country or whatever and um and I probably messed up his wording but God brought us to the city God when we when Mike had his stroke um this is where God moved us and when I asked why are you after the the everything started and I realized what was going on. I said, why did you move us to the city? We were out in the middle of nowhere. And at that moment I saw like a big chessboard and God moving his people where he wanted them. So you have to do what God says. So that was the first thing I got. We followed the truck in. If we hadn't followed the truck, my instinct in the, the dream 
I remember thinking, oh, I shouldn't follow this truck, but I didn't see any other way to turn back around, so I followed the truck. If you're, if you're on the wrong path, don't follow a man to get on the right path. Turn around and follow God. So that brings me to a third, <laughs> a third thing that I wanted to talk about. Um, yesterday, I was, I was at my, my bottom bucket. Oh, you know what? Let me talk about the dream for just a second some more. The other thing is you may have to stand before people and go against what you know God has said not to do. You maybe have your your pets taken from you because you refuse. You may have your children taken from you. You may be separated from everyone you love. You still must obey God. It, Jesus said, whoever endures till the end will be saved. Not those who do what the world says. We, we live in such a wicked world as it is. Um, time is drawing near to the end. And if your eyes have been opened or are being opened, you're going to realize we've been taught that the United States, from the time we were little, the United States is founded on all these godly principles and all this, this wonderful, this Christian nation. We've never been a wonderful Christian nation. We are wicked from our founding. Um, the, the root word for America is land of the plumed serpent. So if that doesn't tell you all you need to know, I don't know what to tell you. Um, most of our founding fathers were Masons. Um, if you look and research that at all, it doesn't take long to find out that they serve Lucifer. We don't want to serve Lucifer. The ones at the, the bottom probably don't even understand that. So if you're in it, get out. Um, so don't think that we're this great Christian nation that God's going to save. We look around at our wealth and think that, oh, look what, look what we have. Look what we have. We're, we're so awesome. We have everything. And that verse I just read to you, we sit as a queen. We have everything imaginable, even the people that are the poorest people in the United States have things that people in other countries don't even have. They, they can feed their family. They can, um, you know, and, and maybe they're not getting every single meal, but they're getting more food than people in some places are. So this nation is, is ready for judgment. We are in judgment. I think that we will watch the, the United States fall. And I think it will be like the Bible says, in Revelation 18, in one day we will see it fall. And we will literally go from a first world country to a third world country overnight. So um, that brings me to a third point I'm going to share. Um, we have a, a family member, a close family member, and this family member gets angry very easily, um, not just with one person, but with anyone and um lots of blame and and lies happen and um anyway so yesterday i was um i told mike i needed to refill my bucket and um if you're someone who's like me the way i need to refill my bucket is i need time away from everybody where i don't have any responsibilities to anyone for just a little bit and then I'm able to come back and be a better version of me, better wife, better mother, better friend. Um, so I left for a little bit and there was a, a used book sale for a homeschool curriculum. So I went to that and then I went and looked at some garage sales. And um, so while I was doing all that, um, I was thinking about this family member and thinking about the last conversation I had with them, they got mad at me and um, hung up on me because they got mad at me. And I thought, well, maybe I should call them and see if they're having a better day. And I thought, why would I do that? Why would I call this person who's so angry and definitely isn't walking in the spirit, wants nothing to do with God, why would I call them and 
check on them when almost every conversation ends with anger. And immediately I felt conviction. Because how often do we complain to God? Why did you allow, for example, why did you allow Mike to have a stroke? Why, what are we supposed to do? How are we supposed to feed our family? This is a conversation I had with him when Mike had his stroke. Um, you told me to stay home and homeschool our kids. What are you doing? I don't understand. We have been faithful. We've obeyed. What's going on? And you keep complaining and God gets silent. Have you realized that? And what I realized yesterday was I'm thinking about talking to this family member and I'm thinking, why would I call them? They're, they only get angry. They're not happy with anything I do. They don't respect my boundaries. I've put firm boundaries with this person. They don't respect them. Um, so when they cross the boundaries, I have to go to the next step in, usually I have to end the conversation. And so I started thinking about that and started thinking about um, how God must feel and why God gets silent. He's getting silent because why should he be spending his time talking to us when all we want to do is gripe and complain and argue and not obey his word? He's giving you his word. He's told you what to do. Do not tell me. My friend Jess says it best. I love what she says. She says this all the time. Do you really think Jesus died so you could have a ham sandwich? That doesn't even make sense. He went through torture. He went through the most terrible death anyone's ever suffered. So you can have a ham sandwich? No. If God is silent with you, you need to ask, what, where, where do I need to change? What do I need to do differently? And start working on doing those things differently. Start looking in his word, digging in his word. What does he expect from me? And start doing it. Time is short. We don't have a long time to get this figured out. Jesus isn't coming back for an immature bride. Let me ask you, for those of you who are married, when you went to go find your spouse, me as a woman, did I want a boy, a man who acts like a 12-year-old boy? Absolutely not. I wanted a man. I wanted someone who would take care of his family who would defend me if I needed help, who would hold me if I cried. I wanted a man, not a little boy. And I can guarantee you, when Mike married me, he didn't want to marry a little girl. He wanted someone who'd work through some of her junk and to continue working through her junk. He doesn't want to be married to a little girl. He doesn't want to be married to someone who never can take care of herself and never can figure out anything on her own. Jesus doesn't either. He's laid down. He's laid down in his word what he expects from you. Go in there. Start doing what he says. So when he comes back, he finds a mature bride ready for him. So I hope you all have a great Shabbat. And I'm going to go ahead and post this video because I normally don't do videos on Shabbat, but I really felt like the Holy Spirit was laying on my heart to do this. So Shabbat Shalom. Have a great Shabbat. If you're not right with God, what better day than on his appointed day, on his weekly Shabbat when he's telling you, please come spend time with me. So have a great day, y'all.